Hi, everyone. My name is Zoe, and I use they, she pronouns. And I'm Jenny, and I use they, she pronouns. We both work at CrowdStrike, where I'm the accessibility lead. And I'm a UI engineer. And CrowdStrike is a remote first cybersecurity company. So no matter where you're based, we're always hiring. We use Ember, Tailwind, and TypeScript. And uh, if you're interested, DM us on Twitter or get in touch via Discord, and we'll introduce you to the right people. Today, we'll talk about the accessibility of the Space Jam websites. Uh, the real question is, which one? Because as it turns out, there are four. We have the original one from 1996. We have a new one uh, made for the 2021 film. We have one for Cinema Times. And then we have like a remastered version of the original one, but made for the new film. Uh, today, we'll look at the original website and the one made for the 2021 film. Um, we'll use our finest tools uh, to check their accessibility. Uh, and here we have Bugs Bunny pointing at our tools. Uh, we'll use a keyboard to check for uh, keyboard navigation. We'll use Apple's voiceover screen reader to look at the souvenirs page. And we'll use the Shark Sharktastic JAWS screen reader uh, to try and play some games on Windows. Before all of this seriousness, though, we'd love to tell you why we chose this page on website to begin with. We chose it for three reasons. Number one, it's awesome. Just look at it. It's the perfect companion to the cinematic, to the cinematic masterpiece that is the Space Jam movie, a movie about Bugs Bunny and Michael Jordan teaming up to play basketball against the aliens. Number two, it's a time capsule. This website has not changed since it was created in 1996. And before we reveal uh, reason number three, let's look at the team that, that created the website. It was created by Andrew Stackler, Jen Brown, Michael Trader, Darren Lemoise, and the team was led by Don Buckley with very little studio oversight. The team mostly compo uh, was largely composed of uh, designers who taught themselves HTML. Uh, they used the latest um, of web technologies available to them at the time to create a website that to this day stands the test of time. And that leads us to reason number three, the new Space Jam website. The new website was created to promote Space Jam A New Legacy, a movie featuring LeBron James. And so like the old one, this is a marketing website. And this is where the similarities really seem to end. The new website had two decades worth of front-end development knowledge and expertise. And where accessibility was not really a term used in the 90s, Warner Bros, like any large corporation, keeps on claiming that accessibility is really important for, to them. But uh, is large corporations promising to be accessible actually translate into accessible websites? Or is it just self-indulgent promises like Daffy Duck kissing the Warner Bros logo on his butt in this GIF? And have two decades worth of experience and tooling actually made the web more accessible? And finally, is the new Space Jam movie better than the old one? We will focus on these questions in our demos where we'll use different tools uh, to look at both websites uh, and assess how accessible they are. And in the first demo, we'll be checking how easy it is to navigate the websites using keyboard only. I will first look at the old Space Jam website and then at the new one. In both cases, I'll start on the landing page. I will navigate to any other page and then come back. Uh, so first, let's go through uh, the keys that I'll be using. So I'll be using tab to focus on the next element. I'll use shift tab to focus on previous elements. Enter to activate focus control and control tab to go to the next browser tab. So let's jump into the demo. Uh, we are on um, the old Space Jam website. In the middle, we have the logo and it is surrounded by planets. Uh, each of the planets has a name, so I'm assuming this is uh, where the name of the page that we'll be taking to it if we click on it. Essentially, the landing page here is 
uh, the main menu or the main navigation. All right, so let's press start to see where we happen to be, and we can clearly see the focus on press box shuttle. Okay, well, let's stop through this. Okay, so we're going uh, clockwise. Okay, here we started jumping. I mean, you can say that the tab order is a bit weird here, but you can clearly see your focus. So it's not really a massive issue. And now we've tapped through everything, we're behind the jam. So let's press enter and see where it will take us. And we're on behind the jam page. In the middle, we have an image. Uh, inside the image, we have four phrases. Now, I wonder if it's just text that is part of the image or we can actually interact with it somehow. So I'm pressing tab and you can see the focus um, on the Space Jam logo in the top left corner. I'm pressing tab again. Cool, so you can see clearly see the focus within the image on animation sketches. Uh, I'm pressing tab again, so it moved. Okay, I wonder if it's just a focusable element or if I click on, uh, if I press enter, will actually be taken somewhere. So I'm pressing enter. And we're on the character development page. Okay, very cool. Um, we've overdone what we've set out to do. So I am going to press tab and we're on Space Jam logo. I'm pressing enter, hoping it'll be I'll be taken back to the London page. We're back on the London page. Great. The old website passed uh, the first demo. Uh, let's see how uh, the new website compares. So I'm pressing Control Tab, and we are on um, the new Space Jam website. But only we're not actually on the new website. We're not seeing the landing page. What we're seeing here is the popover above the landing page. Uh, but this shouldn't be a problem. I see there's a close button in uh, the top right corner, the yellow square with a cross. So basically all I have to do is tap to it, close the popover, and then we can begin our demo. So I'm pressing tab. Uh, I'm not seeing the focus, so i am press tab again. I know that the focus is on something because if we look at the bottom left corner, um, I see a URL and I, I'll press tab again. So it moved to synopsis now. Um, but I guess the focus is underneath the popover. That's why I'm not seeing it. So if the focus is actually somewhere on the landing page, maybe I should just press enter and we'll be taken to that page instead. So I don't even have to close the popover. So I'm pressing enter. Right, so if you look at the main URL bar, um, you can see we are on the synopsis page, but I cannot see it because of the popover. So no shortcuts, we're back to the original plan. Uh, so let's tap to the button. So I'm tabbing, I'm tabbing. Okay, tabbing some more. Okay, now I'm on the popover. Let's copy link. Tapping a bit more, play mute. And okay, we're out of the popover. So we're now on the Chrome tab. Um, cool. Uh, I guess we can end our demo here. Uh, thank you everyone for coming to our talk. We'll see you at Embercom 2023. Um, this, there's no way for me to close this popover screen with my keyboard. Um, I cannot tap to it, uh, let alone press that button. Um, and I, I mean, as much as I like to joke that a front end developer's job is to center divs and make buttons, it really is our job to make buttons that work. This is why there's always an outcry when you have articles about how a button cost a business half a billion uh, because that's we're paid to make website usable websites and here we have an example of a button that doesn't work and money aside um zoe and i work for a cybersecurity company so uh working button is the difference between stopping a breach or not. So on this somber note, I pass over to Zoe. Thanks. Uh, thanks.
Right. So let's have a look at this yellow square with a cross in it that's pretending to be a button. Um, we can use Chrome's DevTools to, to have a deeper look. So if we right click on our yellow square and we choose inspect, we get presented with the DevTools. And here on the left, we see all of the HTML and we can see the HTML for our supposed button uh, highlighted. And we can see that it's a div with an ID of trailer close. Uh, there's also a data attribute and then a style attribute with some styling in it. Uh, inside, we find two spans, which are used to make up the cross. Um, but there's nothing here that uh, indicates any buttonness uh, for, for this element, uh, other than maybe the ID. Uh, but there's no semantics here. We can still dig a bit deeper, though. Um, if we uh, move over to the right, we have a set of tabs, including styles, computed, layout, event listeners, and then a Chevron menu. If we open that menu, we get some more options, one of which is accessibility. If we go into that, we get presented with the accessibility tab. And here we see the accessibility tree, which is essentially like the DOM, but with accessibility information. Then we also have ARIA attributes, which would list uh, ARIA attributes that are added to the selected element. And then under that, we find perhaps the most interesting portion, which is the computer properties. So here we can see all of the accessibility information that is being computed for our selected element. Uh, right now, we can see that there is no accessible name and that the role is generic, generic being the implicit role uh, for, for a div element. So there's a few things missing here. Um, this is trying to be a button, but we don't have the semantics for it. Uh, one way in which we could solve that would be to just add ARIA. Uh, so we can add a role attribute and set that to button. And if we switch to our accessibility tab, we can see that under ARIA attributes, uh, the role attribute has been added with the value of button. And under computed, we can see that indeed the role is now button. Uh, it still doesn't have a name though, which we can fix with yet more ARIA. So let's add another attribute and we can do ARIA label. Then we can set it to something like closed dialog. It seems uh, clear enough. Uh, if we switch to the accessibility tab, we can see under computer properties that the name is now closed dialog. And we can also see that it comes from the ARIA label that we added. Uh, by default though, a div is not uh, accessible via keyboard. So I can't get to it with the tab key. There's an attribute we can add to uh, add it to the tab order of the page. Um, and we do that with the tab index attribute. So let's add that. If we set tab index to zero, um, the element will be added to the tab order based on its location in the DOM. So similar to how it works for other focusable elements such as inputs or links. Okay, so we should now be able to try this demo again uh, because we added the semantics and we added the square to the tab order. So I'll set focus to the page and I'll press the tab key. Okay, I'm not seeing focus yet. Uh, if I press tab again, I get into the YouTube player again. So maybe focus is on the button, but I'm just not seeing it. And we can uh, we can inspect that in uh, the DevTools as well. So if we switch back to DevTools and go to the Styles tab, uh, we can right click on uh, our HTML, on the element in the HTML, and we can go to Force State and we can choose Focus. This will show us uh, any styles that might be applied while focus is active. And in the style tab, we can see that uh, when focus is active, the outline property is set. Unfortunately though, it's set to none, uh, which is even made important for some reason. Uh, this is equal to hiding the cursor for mouse users. Um, essentially, you have no idea where you are on the page. So let's, let's disable that style for now. Uh, so then maybe we can see where we are. Okay, going back to the page, and I can already see the, the focus outline, but let's try the demo again. I set focus to the page and I press the tab key, and now I can uh, see focus on the button. So that's good. Uh, let's try if we can now close this dialog. So I'll press return, 
which doesn't do anything. Uh, I'll press the space bar just to see if that does anything. Nope, doesn't do anything. Okay, uh, what's going on? Let's head back to our DevTools again. And if we select uh, our button, on the right in that uh, Chevron menu we used earlier, we can select event listeners. And this will list all of the event listeners added for this specific component. And we can see that it's only a click uh, listener. So the, the click listener listens for uh, pointer events. Um, so this will work for something like uh, an iPad. On an iPad, you could close this menu uh, if you use touch. Um, you can click on it and it will close it. But even though I can set focus to this button, it won't close with uh, either the return or a spacebar. Even though we added all of this semantic information, this button still doesn't work for everyone. And as Billy prompted, when UX doesn't consider all users, shouldn't it be known as some user experience or sucks? To find out if these websites work for all users or only some, we'll have to look beyond the pixels. So let's do exactly that. Instead of looking at pixels, how about we listen to pixels and we can use voiceover for that. As a disclaimer, I'm a fully sighted user, so I use voiceover to test the features that I've created, but not in my daily life. So the way I use voiceover, it will most likely be very different from how a daily user uses it. And before we jump into the demo, let's look at the keys we'll be using. So to turn voiceover on, uh, we need to press command and F5 or command and the touch ID on your uh, touch bar. Um, I should probably call out straight away that voiceover is an Apple product. Um, hence why you need the command key to be able to uh, start it on, uh, to turn it on. Um, so the next keys uh, I'll be using is control option and uh, left and right arrows. Control option is a very popular voiceover combination and the two keys are sometimes used voiceover key, called voiceover keys or VO keys. And to open the web router, I will be using VO U keys. And the web router, is essentially this box that says links in the left corner. Uh, a web router is a voiceover element and uh, it is a collection of different menus available to the user. Now, at uh, the bottom of the page here, we have uh, the speech output box, which is essentially subtitles for voiceover. And to the right, um, the outline around press, press box shuttle. Um, it looks like focus, but actually it's a virtual courser. And the virtual courser allows um, users to focus into item, elements that are not usually focusable. And now that we have this tool set, um, let's start the demo and we'll start it on the old website on the Stellar Souvenirs page. And uh, I will switch on voiceover now. Voiceover on Safari, Stellar Souvenirs. So voiceover is on and um, we are on the Stellar Souvenirs page. Uh, I chose this page because I just happen to really like it. Uh, the layout here is very similar to behind the jam page. So we have the image in the middle, we have stellar souvenirs written above the image and within the image, we have seven links um, that, well, now we know our links. Um, well, let's see what we can do on this page using uh, voiceover. So I'm going to open the rotor, pressing VOU. Links menu. Uh, I'm going to go through uh, the navigation that's available to us, the menus that are available to us. Images menu, window spots menu, links menu. Okay, so out of uh, the menus available to us, the links menu looks the most interesting and straight up the amount of links here is a lot more than what we see on the page. Uh, so um, 
voiceover is arguably enhancing our experience straight away. So we've discovered some Easter eggs. And at the bottom, I see loans and haircut. Um, okay, I'm, I'm really curious where haircut will take us and where it's even coming from. So I'm going to um, go down to haircut. Visit link, 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 haircut HTML. Link, haircut HTML. Okay, and I see the virtual courser around uh, the squiggly thing near the barber shop. So honestly, um, as a cider user, I would have never even considered pressing um, on that element. Um, so yeah, we've, we're definitely discovering Easter eggs here. Uh, right, let's um, see where the link will take us. Stella Souvenirs web content. Yes, you need one indeed. Stella Souvenirs web content. We're taking to an incredibly sassy page. Um, yes, you need one indeed. Well, thank you, website. Um, I should probably mention again here that this website was built with very little studio oversight. Um, I mean, honestly, to me, um, yeah, the experience with voiceover uh, has addition, has added a layer of depth to the website and you do get some whimsical Easter eggs. Uh, now let's see how the new website compares to Unpress and Control tab. Space Jam, a new legacy vertical line official site web content. And I'm on the new website. And finally, we're seeing the landing page. Um, spoiler alert. Um, you cannot close the popover with voiceover. So let's pretend uh, friends stop by who happen to have a mouse with them and uh, they they close the popover for me. And because we never did the first demo on the new website, uh, let's do the first demo here now. Uh, so we'll start on the landing page and navigate anywhere else. So I see there's fun and games right in the middle of the menu bar. Let's go there. Um, so, like on the old website, uh, I'll bring up the web router. So I'm pressing BOU. Links menu. Images menu. Window spots menu. Landmarks menu. Okay, we. I need the landmarks in the menu, and I see navigation here. Uh, let's go there. Banner navigation. Okay, so that we're focusing on the navigation bar was never announced, uh, but. I'll just trust that it worked. Um, so I'm pressing tab. Link, video, list seven items, video. For some reason, it decided to skip the home tab and we landed straight on video. And um, I don't know if you've heard it, but it did say a video link of seven. Um, there are more than seven links in uh, the snav bar. So we're getting an experience, the opposite uh, experience of what we had on the old website where things that are clearly visible on the navigation, uh, on the nav bar are not showing up and we're not told about them. But at this stage, I feel like anything is nitpicking. It does have a button that doesn't do what a button is supposed to do. Uh, so let's just go to fun and games. Uh, so I'll be pressing VO and the right arrow key. Link, synopsis, three link, fun and games, four of seven. Fun and games. And I'm pressing enter. And I can see that we changed uh, the page. So we are now on fun and games. However, voiceover never announced it. Uh, and that is a bit of a problem. If I was relying on voiceover to tell me where I am on the website, I would have no idea that um, I'm on fun and games. This, the experience of using the new website does feel like death by a thousand paper cuts. Uh, there's a button that completely doesn't work, but even if you have someone to navigate you to the main website, it sort of works enough, but it really doesn't work. And the whole experience is incredibly frustrating. So on this exasperated note, I hand over to Zoe to actually try playing some of the games. Thank you very much.
Okay, so with voiceover out of the way, uh, let's look at another screen reader. Uh, we'll switch over to Windows where we have uh, JAWS. So here we are on the old website and we have a page open with Match to Monstars, which is a game. Um, before we dive into that, let's discuss some statistics because a lot of us developers test with voiceover. Um, it's available on our machines, um, it's easy to activate, and it's relatively easy to sort of navigate with it. Um, but voiceover has about uh, a 5% market share, whereas JAWS has over 50% market share. So it's used by a lot more people. Uh, so I think it's good that we're gonna do a little test for that. Okay, so this game, Match the Monsters, is asking us to match one of the nerd logs, which is like the tiny monsters, um, to the monsters, which are the giant monsters that play basketball against Bugs Bunny and Michael Jordan. So in order for us to play this game with something like JAWS, uh, these images will need to have alt text, and that alt, alt text will need to have, um, will need to describe their characteristics uh, so that we can sort of match them. So uh, let's turn on JAWS. Full speech. Similar to uh, voiceover, JAWS has a function where we can pull up a list with certain elements on the page. So we could pull up a list for headings or landmarks or links, um, but we can also pull up a list of all the graphics. So if I want to do that, I do control insert G. List one, list view, match the mod stars, 18 of 24 to move. So JAWS now shows a list of all the images on this page. Uh, it announced how many there are, and we can navigate through this list using the arrow keys. Nerdlick, 19 of 24. So I just moved uh, to the Nerdlock image. Um, the alt text for it is just Nerdlock. So it doesn't have any of those characteristics that I just mentioned. So this won't really allow us to, uh, to play this game uh, because we can also see that the alt text for the other images of the monsters are just their names being Null, Zilch, Void, Nada, and Bupkis. Um, again, doesn't include any of the characteristics that we would need. So let's close this menu. Escape. And mute uh, Jaws for now. Space, speech on demand. Because we won't be able to play this game with Jaws, uh, not based on the audio cues that we'll get anyway. But maybe we can still play with a keyboard, uh, and that might still be fun. And I think we can all use some fun. So I'll press the tab key, and I can see that my focus is now on Null, which is the first monster. Um, so hmm. the nerd log that we're presented with, it looks grumpy and a bit angry. Um, I think it's Zilch, which is the orange one. Uh, so I'll press return. And I was right. So we get presented with a, with a page that says I was right. And there is a transition give that goes from the nerd lock to the monster. So that's pretty cool. Um, there's also a link that says next. So we can try the next one. So I'll never get to that with the tab key. And we're presented with our next nerd lock, which this one is tiny. It looks very sad. Um, who do we think he turns into? Uh, I'm going to go with orange or with the red one, which I believe is called Nada. So let's try that. Let's return. And um, oh, I was wrong. So we're presented with a page that says that no, this nerd lock does not match to the monster. Um, there is a button to try again, so we could do that, but I had some fun. Uh, let's let's move to the new website, see how that compares. So I'll do uh, control tab. And here we are on the fun and games page on the new website. This is where Jenny uh, left us at the end of their demo. So let's turn on JAWS again. Full speech. A lot of assistive technology comes with certain uh, key shortcuts that you can use to navigate the page to easily get to certain parts. So in JAWS, for example, I can press the Q key to go to the main region or the main landmark. So I'll press Q. There is no main region on this page. Of course, developers need to implement it for us to be able to do that, uh, which here they didn't do. Um, but 
No worries. There are other things that we can try. We can press the H key to go to the next heading. Fun and games heading level two. Okay, so there's a heading on this page. Uh, it is fun and games, which is the title, so that's perfect. Uh, but it is a heading level two. Um, since it's the title for this page, I would expect it to be a heading level one. But at this point, I'll take that it has a heading anyway. Um, so we'll use the tab key to sort of see what things there are on this page. Movie game pinball link graphic. Pinball, that sounds fun. Movie game R lens link graphic. The R lens. Movie game activity book link graphic. And activity book. Um, I'll, I think we'll go for pinball. That sounds like something we should be able to do with a keyboard anyway. Uh, maybe even with JAWS. Movie game pinball link graphic. Movie game pinball link graphic. I'll press return to go to the game. Enter. Space Jam Full Court Pinball Dash in Theaters July 16th and on HBO MAX trademark. Okay, so we're taken to a new uh, to a new page. Um, this page has the game on it, basically the, the title page for it, which has some characters at the top. I see a play button and then some links at the bottom um, to like various pages. So we'll try the same tactics that we did on the last page. Uh, we'll press the Q key to go to the main region. There is no main region on this page. Which there isn't on this page either. Uh, so let's try H for heading then. There are no headings on this page. There's no heading either. Okay, but I did see a play button. So let's use B to go to the button. There are no buttons on this page. Okay, so it's not a real button then. Uh, but maybe we can find if there are any focusables at all by pressing the tab key. Privacy policy link. Okay, wow. Um, I'll, I'll use my mouse to, to quickly mute that. That's very annoying. Uh, so for some reason, music started playing as soon as I pressed the tab key. Um, I did hear JAWS announce the privacy policy, which is a link in the footer. That tells me that on this page, there are no focusables before the footer. So I won't be able to play this game with JAWS or with a keyboard. Um, I can read the privacy policy. I don't know how much fun that will be, but those are my options on the new website. <laughs> okay. Let's, uh, let's get back to our slides. So here we have Bugs Bunny asking the nerd Lux, eh, what's up, Doug? Do you remember the three questions that we started with at the beginning? The first one was, does corporations promising to be accessible translate into accessible websites? Um, no, no, it does not. Uh, and Bugs Bunny here seems to agree with us. If accessibility isn't made a requirement, then the end result won't be accessible, regardless of how much corporations pledge to be. So if corporations don't care more, then we should. At no point did the original team ask the suits if they could make their fancy website accessible. They just did it. As Michael Jordan here says, you guys had the special stuff inside of you all along. You don't have to ask for permission to make something accessible. It's part of your job. Accessibility isn't a feature, it's not something extra. It's been a core component of the web and it always has been ever since its invention. If you're not sure if what you made is accessible, a good way to test it is to start with the things that we demoed in this talk. For example, you could use a keyboard to see if you can get to all of the controls. Can you see the focus outline? Can you also activate those controls with the keyboard? And the second question we asked was, have two decades worth of experience in tooling made the web more accessible? Well, yes and no. For users, new tools such as VoiceOver and JAWS definitely helped make the web more accessible. For developers, the amount of new tools we need to learn does sometimes make us jacks of all trades and masters of none. Um, on one hand, it is a hard line to walk. We do need to learn more tools. And let's face it, all of us like playing with shiny new toys uh, when working on our weekend projects. That said, we do have to take time to master tools that are definitely not going to go anywhere. With general development, that can be uh, getting to know the accessibility tab in DevTools and using it to check uh, an element semantics. And of course, it definitely means learning HTML. 
as we have seen a website created uh, 25 years ago using HTML and inline styling, where developer knew how to use proper tags, works with a keyboard to this day. And on the other hand, we have a brand new website where the developer did not bother with proper tags and just turned everything into a div. And that website does not work with a keyboard. So learn about landmarks such as main and use correct headings to subdivide your document. And most importantly, use proper tags. If something is a table, use the table tag, not a div. Our last question was, is the new Space Jam movie better than the old one? And uh, no, it's not. When Jenny and I watched the movie in preparation for this talk, our feeling throughout was basically the emotion that Bugs Bunny is, is sharing here, just scared and in doubt of what's going on. Sadly, the new website isn't much better either, but maybe we can fix that. So remember the fake button that we looked at earlier? Maybe we can actually fix it now. Let's inspect our button that we changed. And so what we did earlier was we added a role attribute, we added an ARIA label, and we added uh, a tab index. We also removed the, the property that was removing the focus outline. But we don't need to do all of these things to make something accessible. So for example, we don't need to use the role button. We also don't need to use tab index. We might want to use ARIA label to provide an accessible name. We could also put it inside to have it as content so the content can provide the name, but using ARIA label is fine in this situation. As we noticed though, this button didn't work even though we added the semantics and the tab index, which was because of the event listeners. So how could we work around that? What we could try is to use, as Jenny mentioned, proper HTML tags. So instead of using a div to create a button, maybe we can use an element that was made for it, if only such a thing existed. Luckily, it does. Uh, we have the button tag or the button element. So let's change this div into a button. We still have our ARIA label for the name. So we should be able to do this demo again. So we're on the website, I'll press the tab. I see the focus outline on the button. So hopefully it works now. I'll press return and see what happens. And it works. So without changing or without adding any event listeners, just by simply changing the div to a button, we made this work. Who would have known that changing a div into a button would make the web more accessible? With that, I just want to say that's all, folks. Thank you very much. <laughs>